You are listening to Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets with Naomi Rose, the food business talk show that shares with you the reality of what's happening in the food and hospitality industry. I am on a mission to help as many people as possible grow and build successful food businesses. Each week on this podcast, you'll get useful information, top tips, as well as what's really happening in the kitchen behind the scenes. Let's get on to today's show. Hello lovely people and welcome to another episode of the Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets podcast. It's really great to have you listening in and I hope you're all doing well whatever it is you're up to today. Today I am going to be talking about how to add in extra income streams into your business because I get it. I've been there. I've owned cafe, bar and bakery. I know how many hours sometimes you do have to work and I've worked very, very long hours just to keep up with demand. And yet sometimes it feels like we're running around trying to do everything, but yet we're still having a battle with the bottom line and trying to make all the books balance correctly. So this is why I put this episode together is to try and help you streamline what you do and make your business easier without necessarily costing you more time and hours and, you know, trading your time for money, which is something we so often get caught up in in this business because that's how we view ourselves of we're doing something we love. So we should really be doing this for as low low cost as possible, right? We should be selling at a low cost because it's something we love doing. That's a bit of a myth. You've got to price things according to your budgets and your overheads and whatever costs you are. But this is what I want to talk about today. Before I get into today's episode, I just want to say I'm always on the hunt for getting guests on this show or coming onto my blog as well because I have the business blog so I share a little bit more insight into the weekly topic that I'm talking about on the blog. So if you are new to business or if you have a baking business or you have a cafe, a home bakery, I'd love to hear from you. So just drop me a DM at I am Baking Boss on the socials, I'm on all of the various different channels or send me an email at naomi at bakingboss.net because I love hearing your stories. So I'm sharing my experiences from in my own kitchen at Elsie Mays when I had that one open but it's really great to share what you've been going through because we're here to help and we're here to support and this is what this podcast is all about is to give you all the resources you need to be the best baking business owners you can possibly be if we all share and we all support each other that can only help if you would love to share your story it'll be really great to have you on here so do drop me a dm how to add in extra income streams to your business so it can be i know how overwhelming business can be sometimes i think people outside the hospitality industry don't always realize how physically demanding working on your feet all day you're lifting things you're moving things you know the weight of dough is heavy enough i used to <laughs> some some days i'll be lifting up tubs of 25 kilos of dough i'm i'm relatively strong but even that's physically a struggle for me and i wear a Fitbit tracker and it some days I get home from work and I've done 30 to 40,000 steps just from running around the bakery. So I really understand how physical a job working in hospitality can be. So you need a lot of fitness and you need to you know, put yourself first and make sure you're looking after your own health. But when you're running around and doing all these things and trying to meet customer demands and you've got admin tasks coming out your ears, it is really, really hard sometimes to see how you are going to ever keep meeting that bottom line and make your life easier. It is a challenge when you're in the thick of it. Sometimes it just feels like there is no way out and you're kind of in the middle of the woods and there's not really an easy direction to go in. And this is why I want to put this episode together because I looked at various different new income streams to bring into my business that would not necessarily cost me lots of additional time because I was very much Definitely a lot of the times I was often quite time poor because at times I had a team of 17 people. So my demand on me was quite tough. And then if I had to suddenly, if someone was off sick, I'd often have to step in. So sometimes my days would be quite unpredictable. But I looked at various different ways of where I could actually add in extra income streams that weren't necessarily going to make me lots and lots more money because that wasn't what it was about. But what I was trying to do was gain a little bit of my time back, streamline a few things so that I can then make my business more profitable, which then helps grow the business and also, more importantly, helps 
conserve my time and energy to put it into the right areas, which is sometimes we forget to do. I'm going to throw out a few ideas, which some of these ideas might work for your business if you've got a physical location and you have a cafe or a bakery. Some of these ideas might not work if you're in a home bakery. But these are just some other options that you can think about that might help support you, which means that you don't have to work as many hours as you're doing, or you could just readjust your business strategy to make it work better for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the beating heart of your business and they have to work for you. When I opened Elsie Mays, one of my big things, because I can't remember if I mentioned on the podcast before, but if I haven't, I'm a classically chained cellist. So music and Elsie May, who was my grandmother, was always a massive part of both our lives. So I was really, really keen to bring live music into my local town, bring events in because I've worked on events. I've done I've worked in big festivals, I've worked in international festivals, and I just love organising events because it's my, it's my area of genius, if you like. I like a bit of organisation, as I've told you before. What events can do is, even though they might take a little bit of extra work, once you've got a lot of the ticketing and all of those sorts of things set up, it's very easy to replicate again and again. And they're a great way of bringing in extra income stream. So some of the examples we had, so we did live music, which is a really easy win because you you pay a band to come in, you sell tickets for it, and certainly we did. And all I did was chuck on extra staff in the bar. And I did, a, sometimes I did food and I just did like grazing boards or sharing platters and that worked really well. And it was a great way of bringing in an extra bit of income every month. And it didn't take too much demand on my time because all of the admin was set up behind the scenes. I just needed to do a bit of changing. So once it was all set up to start with, it was just a matter of organising and promoting it and getting it out there. And they're great fun. I used to love doing the live events. We had one of the ones that we had once was a cabaret day and that took a little bit more work, but it was so much fun. And it was as we were coming out of the pandemic and we were allowed to have the freedom again. And it was absolutely great event to do. So these kind of things really work well. And if you don't necessarily, I had a bar. So obviously those kind of things work well when you have a bar. If you don't have an alcohol license, you could do stuff like workshops or like we had um, reef making workshop or a cheese and wine night was another example or a, you know, food tasting. One of the ideas I had uh, before we went into lockdown, I was going to do a Mad Hatter's afternoon tea party. So, And I thought that would be a really nice afternoon special occasion treat for people to come in and do it. So it could be that it's just integrating a, a special offer into what you already do. And the great thing about the events, and certainly where you've got something like, for instance, a wine and cheese night, I use local people and I also had someone come in that would then upsell their wine that I took a commission on. So actually, I did very little work, but I just took a little bit of profit off the top. So it meant that the event was very, very viable. We got the ticket price, which covered the cost of the staff. And then everything on top of that was a little bit of extra profit, which means I could put it into the next event. So they're really great, easy ways to look at how you can bring in extra income And they're great for brand awareness because people have a great experience. And a lot of the time, the people that came to the evening events then came back for breakfast the next morning. So, you know, they would come in with their hangovers from having such a great night and want to fill English. So for me, it was double win. If you don't have a physical premises, you can find somewhere to do it. One of the other examples that you can do, and this is one of my favourite ways to bring extra income, is by collaborating with other people. I'm an ideas person. I love coming up with ideas, but I also bounce off other people. And I like collaborating because you get different perspectives and it's so much more fun to work with someone else. This is where you can maybe team up with a local producer. And, you know, if for me, I'm going to be moving soon and I know that I'm going to be in some great foodie locations. So I could go to someone and say, hey, you've got this. I teach this. How about we work together and we do some really great events? You get an extra promo from their audience, which be your audience. You'll be able to share a little bit of extra knowledge and you'll get new customers and possibly also then get an extra customer from being able to supply the people that you're working with. So there are lots of great ways that you can collab to bring in those extra income and you won't necessarily have to do lots of extra work. The other thing to think about with all of this. And I'm going to share an example from bakery in the UK here. And actually they do 
They do make bread. They make bread during the week. But on the weekends, they don't sell bread. Instead, they do workshops. And this is a great way. And they do workshops in the front of their shop. Now, this is a great way of bringing an extra income. You might think, well, surely Saturday would be the busiest day of the week. But for them, this works really well because they are teaching, say, 10 people, 8 to 10 people in the workshop. They would probably get more income from doing that workshop than they would with all the amount of work and prep that would go into actually making bread for that one particular day. So they still have the bread as their, so to speak, bread and butter of the business, but they also then teach what they're selling. And people love that. People love an experience. This is definitely the area. And you can see it certainly in the UK from how our high street has changed, that people are buying experiences as gifts. And that was certainly true for when I was having the cafe and bar. People wanted to give something different. People didn't necessarily want physical things. They wanted experiences. So sometimes workshops can actually work out more financially beneficial If you baked one less day a week but did a workshop, it might actually help you bring in that extra income. And once again, once you've got all of that admin set up and in place, it's really easy then to roll it out again and again because it's just rinse and repeat. That is the easiest way to make life a lot easier for you. One of the other things that I certainly discovered with the cafe and particularly the bakery was since the pandemic, particularly. People are much reliant on things being delivered to them. So the era of Amazon, we know that people love a home delivery. I think there are certainly ways that we can add delivery as an offering to our businesses. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you have to do the delivering. And I I delivered during COVID. <laughs> and trust me, I have I have newfound respect for delivery drivers because my legs by the end of the day were exhausted from getting in and out of my car. I think there are lots of ways in which you can add delivery as an offering to your business without causing you lots more work. Um, I used some of the local fast food apps that we had near us like Deliveroo or Just Eat, any of those, even though they do take a relatively high commission. Of mine, I worked on the basis of, well, if I'm not going to sell everything on a given day and you can switch these off whenever you want, then I might as well get someone to come in and pick it up and deliver. So actually people would get Deliveroo on loaves of bread. You know, they would get, they would also order a lunch and then they would add in a loaf of bread at the end of it. So it worked out well for me. Yes, I did take a hit on the mission, but actually when I figured out I'm going to not necessarily get the sales unless I go to the people, then if I got a delivery driver, or I did it myself and got my car registered and all of these little things that have to go into actually doing that delivery and the extra headcount and the reliability, it makes more sense for me to outsource it and make it a little bit easier. And I did always price up on the delivery. So I accommodated for the fact that I was going to be taking a little bit less extra profit. So And people were still willing to pay it because they were willing to pay for not having to move from their house. It's worth testing and trying. Sometimes these apps aren't actually going to cost you any money to set them up as well. So this is another really easy, easy way to add in that extra income is like the special offers is definitely always a way to do it. Loyalty cards, subscriptions, subscription. We had bread subscriptions, so people would actually pay in advance for four, twelve or 12 weeks of bread or cake or whatever that might be and a coffee they knew they were going to be coming in every week and they saved say five percent on it worked great for me because I knew exactly what I was having to make each week rather than always having to have that slight unpredictability of guessing what customers were going to come in but it kept them loyal and I had loyalty cards so they would get their Every time they had 10 coffees, they would then get their 11th one three or nine coffees and get their 10th one three. So again, it just meant that people kept coming back. Like if we got to three o'clock in the afternoon and we still had some bread on the shelves and we were only 30 more minutes until we shut, we would go around the room and say, hey, our bread's half price. Do you want to take a loaf home? And we'd get a few extra sales from that. So sometimes really thinking of the special offers. When we first opened the cocktail bar, we did happy hour and we did a really strong happy hour offer and we were so busy because it was ridiculous we probably didn't take anywhere near enough profit on it and well I'm pretty sure we didn't take any profit on it in the end but it got people through the door and actually then 
they would buy another cocktail and they would go out to dinner and then come back again. So that worked really, really well for us to begin with. So new special offers or scones of the week work really well. So something people wouldn't necessarily get every week, not necessarily creating more work for yourself, but just really thinking about how you can incentivize your customers to come back. Maybe it's a a local group or a church or it could be a family day or something. And you could go to say like, I don't know, if you went to the local church, for instance, you could say, if you come on Sunday, I'll give you 10% off your breakfast. So you've already got a ready-made audience coming in or whatever that might be. The other one, which is kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with the delivery side of it is selling online. So look I know a lot of businesses do really, really well, and particularly if you're running a home bakery, by selling in your local Facebook groups. My local Facebook group was absolutely key, and I'm pretty sure without that local group, I probably wouldn't hit my crowdfunding target, but it was absolutely key for reaching my crowdfunding target. And you've got a captive audience there, so use those groups to find out what they want and actually talk to the customers because you might find that by them inputting, you're more likely to get sales from it. So do utilise those online channels. And I know, and I under, I've i worked in digital for a long time, and I know how much work goes into trying to manage a business, trying to run the social media channels, thinking about an email. You don't have all of the hours in the day to do all of those things, but do pick one and just do it really, really well. So really think about where your customers might be and target that and just share what you're selling, what special offers you've got going on. And that will really help build that audience around those things. And maybe it's like a last minute special offer you can put out to them through those channels, but utilize those online channels to make your life a little bit easier, particularly when you're thinking about taking customer orders. If you can automate systems as much as possible, you might not be tech, might not be your area where you're really comfortable and you might feel quite daunted by the thought of this there are people out there that can help you you don't have to know everything you don't have to do everything there are people out there that can help you automate your systems which will save you money and time in the long run so think about how you invest in the tools you need for your business to make it easier for you imagine if you didn't have to write down and organize all those orders every week it would make life so much easier it'd save so much time and you can concentrate on what is important and that's making profit in your business where can you actually streamline stuff or invest or outsource that will actually benefit your business in the long run you're investing you're not it's not cost it's investment look at it in a whole different way the final thing which I'm going to touch on is a word that often gets banded around, but it's not necessarily a correct term for it, but it's called passive income. You may or may not have heard of it, but it's about making money by selling a product over and over again. So like a book, for instance, or an online course, if you, you know, there's lots of places where you can put records, say doing bread making, you can put it up on a website and you can just what you've done it once and you can sell it over and over again. That's the idea of passive income. Of course, it makes it sound like you have to do no work and get money. You still have to do work to get the money. But what's great about it is you're packaging up something like a virtual workshop or an ebook, or you can self publish a book yourself because you can self publish through Amazon. It is so, so simple to do. So you could have a cookery book that you want to self publish. You can do that through Amazon with some really, really easy channels and then sell it to your audience. And that is like a bit of work, but you can sell it over and over and over again. And again, it's just bringing in all of those little extra income streams into your business that need that little bit of extra work at the outset, but you can use to sell again and again and again. And that is what helps you then build your business, make your life easier keeps you happy in your business because you've got to enjoy what you're doing. But if you're running around ragged trying to manage everything, it is really, really hard to keep the love going. So those are some of my ideas about how to add in those extra income streams without necessarily having to cost you lots more time and hours of which are often very precious in our industry. So just a bit of a recap, you can do workshops, events, collaborations, you can look at delivery, special offers, going online and streamlining those 
automating and making sure your processes are all in place to make life easier for you. And then you've also got things like the virtual workshops, books, downloadables, anything like that, where you can really maximise on reaching new audiences. So I hope that's given you a bit of a food for thought. And, you know, I'd love to hear if you've been adding in extra income streams or this is something you've really been struggling with of how to balance your time. I'd really, really love to hear from you whether some of these things work for you or you've tried them and they really do not work for you. I like to hear both sides of it because these are what's worked for me in the past, but you've all got ideas out there too. So come and share them so we can all get better at our baking businesses. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I will be back again next week with another episode of Kitchen Secrets. I'd love to hear from you. So do drop me an email at Naomi at Baking Boss or I am Baking Boss on the socials. Come and join my Facebook group, Baking Boss Business Owners. It'd be great to have you in there and have a great week. As usual, happy baking. Thank you for listening to Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets with Naomi Rose. If you're enjoying this podcast, then please do give it a review. And don't forget to subscribe and follow. If you want to get some useful resources, then do visit my website, bakingboss.net. And give me a follow on social media at Naomi Rose Baking Boss and I am Baking Boss. We'll see you on the next episode.